Hey everybody, today we're going to dive into the Holley Terminator and take a look at the fueling table, so stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and I want to thank all the new subscribers out there, everybody who supports the channel, everybody who drops a like, all the patrons. Thank you for your support as always. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and click that button. You don't want to miss out on any tuning content. And today we are diving into the fuel tables of the Holly Terminator. Technically, this is a Terminator X, the Max, the drive by wire style, but nonetheless, Terminator is a Terminator is a Terminator. That being said, uh, I had a video back in the day that I'll post a link to in that corner. I think that's the right corner. Whatever, one of the corners where we talked about setting up a base fueling table off the VE table in HP tuners. Go check that one out. That table got us running. Now, it wasn't the most accurate, but it did get us running. And then we were able to use the learning ability of the Terminator X to start getting things dialed in. And I haven't done anything besides just use the learn. Haven't smoothed the table out, haven't cleaned it up, but I wanted to show you guys kind of what the process looked like. And we're also gonna talk about enrichment tuning because that's where I really had to get things dialed in in order to get the car running in the first place. So I'm gonna jump in the car, pull up the laptop, share the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. And we're gonna dive into fuel tuning on the Terminator X. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get the car fired up here and Whenever you are using the Holley Terminator X, the first thing that you want to do is grab the configuration from the ECU. And so if you click the sync button up here, it will pull up a window and it'll say that you have failed fuel while you're still doing the learn process. And that's because it does the learn process, saves that information to the ECU. You don't want to override that. So go ahead and hit get from ECU. It will pull the existing file in and then what you can also do is link up and you can see all this stuff live. Same ordeal, grab it from the ECU. It's making changes right now in the background. And we'll come over to the fuel tab and you can see this area down here is where it's been doing the self-learning. And we weren't too far off in this bottom area where we're looking at 75, 76 and we were in the high 60s. And even over here, we're only about 10, 15% off. So we got within the 10 to 15% range. I consider that a win. The cool thing though is if we come over to the learn tab, you can see where this thing is actually learning like it does in closed loop. Now there is two different modes. There is closed loop and there is learn. So if you come over to the EFI or the uh, system parameters, you'll see closed loop slash learn. Now closed loop comes in here and go, this cool circle down here shows you exactly where on the fuel table or this particular table that you're in. I have got closed loop set up it's a little bit generous. It can make up to a 50% adjustment to the fueling. Whenever we get the table done though, we're gonna dial this down and we'll allow it to do maybe 15% adjustments, stuff like that. Then you can also come in here and check off all the things that you want in, able to, in order to enable closed loop, much like you do on a GM factory ECM or any factory ECM. So you can make sure that the coolant temperature sensor is up to operating temp. Uh, you can make sure that you have to be over a certain RPM so it's not trying to learn during crank or something like that or a warm start. Same ordeal with TPS, though we could probably leave TPS uh, out of there. Now the learn parameters is what populates that learn table and it runs off that learn table. So if we go back over to fuel here and look at the learn table, it's running off this table, but we haven't committed the changes of this table over to the ECM yet. So the learn table, same ordeal. We come in here, we can look at the amount of correction it can make. And I've got it at 100% across the board. Uh, so we can either double the fuel or pull 100% out of the fuel based on where you're at in that map. Then on top of it, we've got some adjustments that we can make. The big one here is the gain. And this is how big a change it can actually, well, not how big a change, but how much it learns. The higher the gain, the more learning it's doing. I had it at 100% for a while and it was just learning its butt off. Now I've backed it down to 80, which is fine. I'm gonna end up bumping it back up to 100 whenever I go out to wide open throttle. So it is making all the adjustments it can during wide open throttle tuning. Whenever you get this all said and done, you could drop this down real low and it will still learn in the background and give you an idea of how far off your fueling has gotten. And you can still make adjustments, but it's not gonna be as aggressive. Same ordeal though, we can adjust RPM and we can adjust TPS to set those up as triggers to enable learning. But if we go back over, let's go ahead and close this out for now. 
If we go back over to the learn table, the cool thing about it is, is we can hit this button right here that transfers this learning to the base. So if we look at our table, where we're at, we're reading around 67% volumetric efficiency. If we hit transfer learning to the base, it's gonna ask if we want to smooth it out before we transfer it. Well, come on now. And the software may have just locked up on me. There it is says, do you want to smooth the fuel table with learn values? And this is so you don't get any jagged edges. You can go ahead and hit yes. And then you'll see these numbers disappear because it will transfer them over to the base table. It's probably running a little bit slower than normal because I'm recording right now. Let's try it again. Oh, there they went. So now it has adjusted the table based off the values and it's smoothed it. The values look like they haven't really changed much there because we weren't that far off. Now let's talk about some of the different fuel tables in here. We've got the base fuel, that is our VE table. We've got the fuel graph, which is the 3D representation of it. Shows you exactly where you're at on the graph whenever you pull it up and you're online. We've touched on the learn table. Now we've got the target AFR ratio. This is self-explanatory. It's just kind of like the stoic table uh, or your power enrichment table. So we are shooting for 14.7. Uh, and then as we get up to 3,200, 3,600, and then 4,000, we go into what is, in this case, power enrichment, and we're shooting for 12 and a half on this platform for power enrichment. Pretty straightforward. I made this simple. You can actually use the uh, simple table, which will just use the top parameters up here and will automatically populate the bottom one, uh, but I wanted to kind of blend it across in there. Now, acceleration enrichment's just like it sounds like. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can enable acceleration, uh, acceleration enrichment on, such as TPS versus coolant temp. Uh, but basically, it is just kind of the rate of change of acceleration, how much it is going to enrich. Temperature enrichment, self-explanatory. We're looking at coolant temp. And uh, as you can see, once we get above basically 150, we are just giving it 100% of fueling. But down below, we're giving it additional fueling because of cooler weather. Now, the one that got me originally was the startup enrichment. I had to bump up the startup enrichment tables because I was running lean. And you could actually see if you come down here and scroll through uh, fuel tuning and maybe cold start. Let's see. Cold start was showing me my target AFR and my AFR. And I was running really lean on my AFR. And so I had to bump up this startup enrichment until I was getting richer. Then I got it so rich that it just smelled like gas fumes every time it started. It would get running. And so I had to come in here. And the cool thing is you can make adjustments on the fly. You can change all that as you go. Last but not least, we have DFCO, D-cell fuel cutoff. I've got this turned on. It waits two tenths of a second. And then it will kick back off whenever you get 150 RPMs above your idle set point. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy very big fan of how uh, simple this is and i'm super excited this weekend to go over and get some wide open throttle pulls finally and get up into the different areas of the graph as you can see we're set up for a two and a half bar right here but i've got some areas up here where i've got some wide open throttle adjustments and then i want to get all the way down into this area over here get that fueling sorted out and then we can start adjusting the timing Honestly, it doesn't get much easier than that. It's, it just does everything kind of on its own once you get everything set up right now. You have to tweak things like the acceleration enrichment and this cranking fuel tables yourself and get those dialed in. As I said, it took me probably about uh, two hours to really get the crank fuel set up right where it was getting rich enough without getting so rich. And of course, I fouled a set of plugs out in the process because I overshot it initially and just was dumping all kinds of fuel on the plugs. Uh, but for the low price of what a new set of plugs cost, it was a great learning experience and hopefully it'll give you some insight of, you can start that starting uh, cranking fuel lower and then watch that wideband, give it time to warm up, then crank it and you can see exactly if you are running lean or if you're running rich enough and you can see the shifted commanded AFR based on what you adjust that table to, to make sure that you're hitting it. Uh, just keep on bumping it up until you start getting it. Of course, the cooler it is whenever you're doing it, the more enrichment that you need for crank, and then just dial it in. You're only in that table for a couple of seconds anyways, then it's gonna kick over to the standard map and start doing its thing with temperature correction on there. I'm not saying that my temperature correction is necessarily right for this platform, but it is learning based on that. 
And that's the nice thing about it. It learns. You don't even have to take your laptop with you because it retains all that data in the ECU itself. Whenever you get done going out and doing a log, you can plug in, pull that information from the ECU, look at it, and then decide if you want to commit those changes into your actual fuel table. So I'm hoping to get that squared away this weekend, go through all that, get that table to the point where I can basically dummy down that learn table, have it dialed real low, and just use the closed loop operation like you would on a standard car to do any kind of fuel corrections that we need to do. So if you have any questions, suggestions, things like that, make sure and hit up the comments. Uh, we will dive into some of the other tables a little bit more in depth. I've got a whole series on the Holly Terminator that I'm working on right now. There's other videos in it. Uh, I will throw a link uh, up in the corner, I guess, and you can go check out some of my, I'll throw a link to the playlist up in the corner. You can go check out some of the other videos I've done on the Holly Terminator X so far. I am impressed with this to a point. Uh, I kind of touched on it on my last video where I was just talking about the general installation of it. I think the Dominator is a very powerful uh, ECM and I could see myself going to the Dominator eventually, but for guys that are just wanting to get something like an LS swap or a uh, retro mod swap or something like that up and running the easiest way humanly possible and not wanting to deal with things like HP tuners, the Terminator and the Terminator X is a very solid platform, very reasonably priced, and it works like gangbusters. Been very impressed by how easy it is to get everything running. So that being said, I've got other things I got to get back to work. So I want to thank everybody once again for stopping by. Remember, ABT, always be tuning, and thanks for stopping by the garage.